Welcome to How Did I Get This Far? Each episode will tackle the basic skills and knowledge that we all completely missed learning. Soon enough, you'll stop having to ask yourself, how did I get this far? On this episode, wait, accidents I wasn't even a part of can cause my insurance to go up? It's time to find out, how did I get car insurance this far? Hello to my listeners who are drivers, soon to be drivers, or just dedicated listeners who don't drive but are very supportive. I know this topic isn't the most thrilling, but that's the point of the podcast. We will be making uh, it fun to learn about protecting yourself and your vehicle while on the road. My shining guest is Natalie Janetsky. She is an analyst for a car insurance company. You know when you call into a business and you hear, your call may be monitored for quality assurance. Natalie is the one doing the quality monitoring, ensuring great customer service, proper protocols of legal and company guidelines, and more. Welcome to the podcast, Natalie. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Um, So what drove you to a career in car insurance? Well, um, I don't think anyone really grows up wanting to be a in car insurance. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I kind of just fell into the role. Um, I was actually going to school for a degree in psychology. I wanted to do research and that sort of thing. But uh, just looking for a job to kind of go along with that while I was going through school, I just fell into my position and I just started making a career out of it. Okay, amazing. And are you enjoying it or are you like, I'm trapped? (laughs) (laughs) No, I actually really do enjoy it. Um, I love all of the opportunities that are within uh, insurance in general. There's a lot of career opportunities more than just being the person who writes the policies and makes changes to the policies. So I I really love it. I enjoy talking with uh, customers. I enjoy working with uh, the employees within the company. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, I was thinking about my experience with car insurance that wasn't just very average and normal. And I remembered I actually had taken a defensive driving course with my parents. They found out that their insurance could go down if they complete the course and they had me join because I'm actually terrible at driving. Um, (laughs) And one of the things that really stuck with us and has become a running joke is um, they were teaching us to scan. So essentially like look around you, make sure everything in front behind and at the sides of you are clear. And so it just became a running joke whenever my family is around. We're just like, okay, scanning, scanning, like even not in the car, just day to day. Um, so we did gain some knowledge from that. I think it turned into more of a joke than us actually learning, but um, I know we'll talk a little bit more later about ways to get your insurance costs down. Um, before we dive into that, we will do a little game. This game is good advice, bad advice. I'll share tips I found on the internet and you'll decide if this advice is good or bad based on your professional experience. Okay, so the first one, don't just take any car insurance quote. Check with multiple companies to get other quotes on rates. I definitely think that's good advice. Um, car insurance companies are really heavily regulated by law, so they all should be around the same price since we're all looking at the same information. But there is going to be one company out of the mix that, for whatever reason, they're able to offer you a better rate. So I always recommend shopping around uh, to find that best rate. So, I mean, like you said, I assume there's some kind of calculator to determine. So you don't really know like what determines why some might be higher than others? So every company has a little bit different contracts. So they look at different things and they weigh different things. Like, for example, everybody is going to be looking at your driving record. So if you have accidents or tickets, things like that. Of course, that's going to impact things, but people or companies also um, weigh where you live differently. Some companies look at that as a heavier weight, um, and some companies don't look at that as big of an impact when creating that insurance rate. So it just really goes down to those things and how they how they weigh those what we call underwriting factors. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. At first, I was like, someone's scamming me, but okay, (laughs) that makes a little more sense. Okay, the next one. Insurance plans are cheaper when there are more cars on the same policy, so it is better to make a big plan with friends or family members and everyone just pay that one person back. So, um, 
it's a little bit of yes and no. Yes, you typically do get a multi-car discount when you're uh, having multiple people on the same policy, but typically those policies do have to be uh, written for vehicles kept at the same address. So you can't just have your neighbor down the road, get on your policy and they just pay you back. That doesn't really help um, and won't properly cover your neighbor. But um, if you do have like a family of four and there's four vehicles in the household, all four of those can be on the same policy. Okay. So within the home, got it. Yes. All right. The next one for lower car insurance, get a smaller car, larger car, larger cars like SUVs cost more than smaller cars. So that is true uh, for the most part. Um, larger vehicles, of course, like a truck is going to cause more damage when it gets in an accident than a, a, a sedan. So definitely that is something that is a factor in creating those insurance rates, but also sports cars, which are smaller, are going to be a little bit more expensive than your average Toyota Corolla. Is that because people that drive sports cars have this urge to show off or is there like a less <laughs> judgmental reason for it? There is a little bit of a less judgmental reason. Um, it's uh, mostly because the parts to repair or replace the sports cars are more expensive okay. than a, a Toyota Corolla. Okay. It's funny. I literally thought that was the reason. I was like, <laughs> they're all jerks. So let's just charge them more. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that one's interesting. All right. The next one, you should bundle insurances as much as you can for discounts. So like life, homeowners, renters insurance with your car insurance. Definitely a, a good idea. Um, most companies that I'm aware of do offer multi-policy discounts. So if you have homeowners and your auto with them, you get a discount or you have life insurance and auto with them, you get a discount. So always a good idea. Okay, great. So the, the, we're finding ways to save money before we even know what it is. So that's great. <laughs> okay. And the last one, it is better to go with a well-known auto insurance company to get better coverage, even though it is more expensive. Yes, um, absolutely. So there are a handful of big insurance companies that are kind of the well-known ones, you know, uh, State Farm, uh, AAA, uh, Progressive, Geico. Those big ones are definitely going to be the ones that I recommend you stick to just because they have a long-standing history in the country. They can prove that they are able to pay out if there is catastrophes, like when there's hurricanes and there's a lot of vehicles that are damaged from those. They have proven over the years that they are financially stable and you know no matter what going with one of those companies if you have a total loss of your vehicle they're going to be able to pay out whereas some of the smaller companies that pop up um, on social media and things like that that are just startups they don't necessarily have a long-standing history you may be able to get car insurance for 15 dollars a month but you don't necessarily know if they'll really be there for you if you need them okay so I think the challenging thing is that car insurance is so expensive. So I would assume that's why a smaller company would be more appealing from the start is that, okay, well, my car's fine. I'm not the worst driver. Let me just take the cheaper route. So I know I have it. Um, but I think we definitely should go over what it is that we're paying so much money for. Yeah. Um, so first of all, what is the process of purchasing car insurance? How do you pick a company. I know we kind of went over it a little bit so far. How do you pick a company? And then after that, we'll go into how do you pick a plan? Yeah. So picking a company is really as easy of as just Googling car insurance. It'll pop up all the major companies out there. You can work up quotes online. You can call in. Um, some companies are able to go into an office and speak directly with an agent. So those are the three ways that you're able to get your quotes and kind of determine where you want to go from there. Yeah. I actually, I had seen advice, uh, another piece of advice. It wasn't really um, an easy one to ask if it was true or false because it felt very um, subjective, but somebody had said another way to pick your insurance is not the company, but the agent. 
if you really like the agent, they really seem like they want to be there for you, then the company policy is whatever this person's going to fight for you. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that. So <laughs> Mike Flanders. <Blander. Yeah. laughs> I mean, absolutely. The companies who do have direct agents, you're going to be working that, with that person for as long as you have a policy with that company. So you do want to have a, a good rapport and build mm. that. For some folks, it's not as important to have a, a single person that they go to. So the companies that just offer over the phone or online services mm -hmm. are good enough. Yeah. Shout out to Michael, my car insurance agent. He's He's been good. So shout out to him. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we picked our insurance company. How do we determine the right plan for us? That's a good question. It is super subjective as to what you personally need. Um, there's really two major plans that you can get full coverage or liability. So kind of the minimum and the maximum coverage that you can get. It just depends on if you have a vehicle that you would like to have money back if it's totaled um, in an accident or in a catastrophe, something like that. Or if you just are driving around an old junker and you're okay with not getting any money back, you can just go with that less expensive plan. It just is whatever works for you. So do you still need insurance even if your car is like trash? <laughs> you do. Um, insurance is legally required if you're going to be driving your vehicle in all 50 states. What is the reason behind needing car insurance? I mean, I, I feel like that's a stupid question, but I also think it's a valid question because no one really knows. We all just believe that we have to have it. Because, um, you know, and then sometimes when you get in a car accident and the other person doesn't have car insurance, so somehow, I guess they're getting away with it. I don't know if they get arrested or how that works. So what, why is it so required? So basically, they, this country wants everyone to be covered as a driver because if you get in an accident they want you to have someone who will pay up for that accident there are very few states that allow you to take financial responsibility on yourself and uh, you have to prove that you have the financial ability to pay out in a really expensive claim in the event there was one but most of the time you do have to have that insurance just because they want to make sure that people aren't just getting gypped if they get in an accident with you because the person that gets in an accident with someone who's uninsured is really getting the short end of the stick they're really in a, in a difficult spot yeah and it ends up being that the person who did have the insurance they're the ones that paid for it unless they find a way to be like to hand me some cash <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> Okay. All right. We'll go back to the plans. What are some questions? You know, let's say we have a, a normal, I don't know, two-year-old sedan. I don't even know what a normal car is. That's a whole nother story. But let's say we got a car. It seems fine. What are the questions we should be asking to determine that we're getting the right plan? So um, you will definitely want to kind of mentally note if your vehicle is financed or leased. So if you have a newer vehicle and you are financing or leasing it, there are specific coverages that you're going to want because of that reason. Things that your financing company or your leasing company are actually requiring of you to carry for the duration of your loan or your lease. So those are a couple of things you'll want to just mentally note about and make sure that your uh, insurance provider knows of that and the coverage that you need. Um, for the most part, your insurance agent is gonna ask you all of the questions. <laughs> so they're going to make sure that they set up a policy based on your needs, based on who the drivers of the vehicle are, the vehicle itself and its specific information, how you drive the vehicle and the coverage you want on it. So those are gonna be some of the major questions that they ask you. Okay. And obviously all of those determine the cost. So when you say how you're driving the vehicle, I assume that means if you're doing a three hour commute to work versus you just use it to go to the grocery store or like something really simple like that. Is that kind of what they're asking? Yeah, exactly. Um, companies either go off of a, a daily amount of driving or they go off an annual amount of driving. Usually it's either one or the other. And they kind of use that to 
it's one of the underwriting factors like I talked about earlier. It's one of the things we use to create that insurance price for you. So of course, somebody who's going 20,000 miles a year is going to have a higher risk of getting in an accident than someone who only drives their vehicle 2,000 miles per year. Gotcha. And you had also mentioned the number of people that are um, going to be driving that car. So this always, I think, is confusing because you want to register the people that are driving it, but then your friend's like, hey, can I borrow your car? And it's like, am I going to be in huge trouble if you happen to get in an accident while you borrow it? Uh, So can you explain how that works? Absolutely. Yeah. So insurance companies do want to know everyone who's going to be regularly using the vehicle. Um, A lot of companies in their contracts do write in something called permissive use. So it's pretty much just you allowing someone to drive your vehicle for a temporary basis. Like you're having a party, somebody's going to go get ice. And that person under your policy contract, if you have permissive use, is going to be covered if anything happens while they're going to the grocery store. So that is something that you may want to check with your insurance company if you are in a situation where other people who are in your household drive your vehicle semi-regularly. You'll just want to see if that's covered. Okay, so going back to this ICE example, if it's a one-time request, should I be calling my insurance like, hey, I just need a quick add-on policy for like 24 hours? So the nice thing is uh, with permissive use, you don't need to add anything to your policy. Um, It may be something you check when you're initially creating your insurance uh, policy with your agent. If it's just going to be a one-time thing and you're not sure, I would just double check because worst case scenario, it's not covered and then you have to front the bill if there is an accident. So those sorts of things, I always recommend checking with your agent. Okay. Check with your agent, people. Okay. Or just get your ice delivered. (laughs) all right cool well let's move on uh okay so we're obviously we're talking about how to pick our plan but how much should we be expecting it's going to cost i've seen you know again i know all around the country it's going to be affected by that i also heard that weather can be an impact so like certain states that are snowy or if it's i don't even know other examples but other weather (laughs) uh, can play a part but is there kind of an expect an expectation of what insurance will cost or does it is does it always what am I saying or does it always depend on a lot of factors um it is always going to depend on so many factors insurance rates actually vary drastically by state um I on a regular basis I work with about 32 states in the country and the prices drastically range from super cheap, like only a couple dollars a day to so, so expensive. Um, And it can definitely depend on whether states with a lot of snow or a lot of hail are going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, States where there are really big hubs of population, really big cities, that's where you do see a lot of the big prices as well. But um, everything uh, can really impact the cost of your policy in some way, shape, or form. Okay. What are ways to lower it? I know we just dove into how to pick it, but what are some tricks to get it lower? Or even maybe other discounts like we said about bundling? Yeah, absolutely. So the bundling is always a great way to lower your insurance. The defensive driver course that you took is a great way that some insurance companies offer to members that they can lower it a little bit. Um, A lot of it is not really anything that you can necessarily do in an instant. Uh, It's just going to be maintaining a clean driving record. That's probably the best thing that you can do to ensure you're getting the lowest rates. Um, If, uh, let me restart there. (laughs) Uh, In insurance, we do look at the Uh, the past five years. So if you have anything like tickets or accidents within the past five years, then that can definitely increase your insurance. So just doing your best. I know some things are involved, but doing the best you can to ensure you're uh, driving as safe as possible, that's going to be the number one thing that'll impact your insurance across the board. Do you have any advice to make sure we're a safe driver? (laughs) Um, 
speeding isn't necessarily a great idea. <laughs> um, but honestly, it's just the normal things that you learn when you're first starting to drive. Like maybe don't eat a burrito and have your soda in the other hand while doing your makeup and driving down the road. Just try to be cautious and aware of what's going on um, and just minimize that distracted driving as much as possible. Yeah, definitely. Uh, okay, so obviously we've named some ways that insurance can go up, you know, obviously if you're not a great driver. Uh, what else causes the increase? I, I always hear people complain, oh my God, my insurance just went up so much. I don't know why that just happened. And I get it, prices of everything always go up over time, but what else is causing insurance to increase? That is such a great question because I deal with that on a very regular basis. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are uh, increases based off of the cost to do business in a particular area. What that means is just how much the car insurance company is paying out versus how much we're getting back in premiums. So if there's an area where over the past period of time, there has been an increase in the number of accidents or the severity of those accidents and or the cost to do uh, vehicle repairs or medical treatment when there are accidents, if those have increased, then that can impact the cost of your insurance policy. Even if you personally haven't had an accident, we look at the general area that you're living in and we look at those statistics to create that rate. So if it goes up, it's because there's a chance that more crime has been going on lately? <laughs> Not necessarily more crime, but I mean, it, it's not this simple, but if you think there was a 15 car pileup a year ago, maybe there was three of those. Of course, that increased the cost that car insurance companies have to pay out. So that may increase the cost of the insurance, even if there weren't as many car break-ins or vandalism happening to vehicles, um, even something as simple as that. Or a better example, um, if there's been a hurricane in an area and a bunch of vehicles were totaled out from flooding, that typically can impact those areas a little bit to make up for the costs associated with totaling out those vehicles. Wow. So when something horrible like those things happens, I should also be upset because my insurance is about <laughs> to go up. <laughs> It can definitely impact the cost of insurance, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Usually around those times, we do try to find other ways to kind of maintain those costs, whether it's implementing additional discounts or additional savings in some way, just kind of make up for the costs that may be weighing on our customers mm -hmm. during that time. Okay. Earlier, you had said when you were naming major car insurance companies, you mentioned AAA. This is probably the dumbest thing I'm going to say, but I thought AAA was completely separate from car insurance. I thought it was like this bonus little, like, we're here to save you rescuer squad um, and not an insurance company. Um, so I guess what is AAA and is it important to be a member of it? And I don't even, now that question doesn't even make sense to me anymore, but I'm just going <laughs> to take it away. <laughs> yeah. So uh, AAA does offer that roadside assistance that you're referring to. Um, and a lot of people do prefer to have it through AAA. But nowadays, a lot of insurance companies are also including that as a option for their customers. So you don't have to have two different companies that you're using uh, different services from. So the company I work for, for example, it's something that we're able to offer really inexpensive. It's just worked into your rate. It's not a separate bill that you have to worry about every year. So that is becoming more of a usual thing that you see from insurance companies. Now, a lot of people are super loyal to AAA and because they've saved them a million times, and I completely respect that. But it is an alternative nowadays. You can find that same service through your insurance companies. Okay, I see where I had this thought now since it, it used to not be an option with car insurance as they used mm -hmm. AAA for the roadside assistance and now they have their own. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Woo. I was like, Amanda, I, I knew you weren't 
that right, but like, wow. <laughs> uh, okay, amazing. All right, another term um, is a VIN number. I remember being asked for it before and it's on like the card, like the side of my car door. Um, but what is that? Is that like the fingerprint for a car? What does that even stand for? What is that? It kind of is like a fingerprint. Every vehicle has a unique VIN number. So um, it is going to be completely specific to your vehicle. Even two of the same your make and model are going to have two different VINs. So it is a vehicle identification number. Oh, that's what I was going to guess too. I'm actually annoyed <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. It is found on the side of your car door. It's also found when you're on the driver's side looking into your windshield in the bottom right hand corner when you're outside. So that's another place you can find it. Okay. Uh, did you do... Oh, all right. So we had covered before uh, about cars, um, car insurance plans, covering other people in your car. Um, so we can skip that question. Uh, okay. Let me think. Okay. So for me, I moved from New Jersey to Los Angeles. So my car insurance originally was in New Jersey. I had my car shipped to California. Um, is this was like a very confusing process for me because as you can tell, I didn't know anything about car insurance. So switching states was very complicated. Are you allowed to be driving a car? I know that like you're changing your license too is a whole thing, but are you allowed to drive a car that has insurance in the state that you moved to, but it's still titled in the original state? I don't even know if I'm phrasing that. Still like owned in another state. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yes, I definitely do. And it is so difficult to move from one state to another. Among other things, like you mentioned, the licenses, uh, the potential registration, the insurance are all things that you have to worry about on top of just getting yourself from one state to another. <laughs> so props to you. I know that's super hard. Um, in terms of insurance and registration purposes, there are some cases where you are able to maintain your registration in your home state and still drive your car in the state you're living in now. But most of those times that's because you're in that new state on a temporary basis. If you're planning to permanently move from one state to another, you definitely do want to change registration to your new state and change your insurance to your new state. Got it which is of course what I did. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to move to some other, um, uh, ohs, I guess we can call them. Um, what is a deductible? I, I think we all kind of know that that's the money you pay first before your insurance starts paying. Um, but if you have a better way of explaining that and, um, is it better ever to handle an accident on your own and not make your insurance go up or should you always be contacting your insurance company? That is such a good question. Um, so you're absolutely right about the deductible. The deductible is what you're going to pay out of pocket first before insurance is going to be able to cover the rest of the damages. Now, a lot of people do choose to have lower deductibles so that they don't have to pay as much out of pocket but there are some folks that are more financially stable and they're able to uh, carry those larger deductibles. So they choose to have lower cost of insurance with a higher deductible that they pay out of pocket if they do have an accident. So what, um, um, what was I going to say? Why, why do we have to pay um, <laughs> if we're paying for insurance? <laughs> <laughs> like why why do we also still have to pay like I get it's a lot less but like it's still a lot <laughs> so there are um you are able to have a zero dollar deductible in some cases but that just means that your cost of insurance is higher so okay. it's basically it's the way that you can you can have control over lowering your insurance basically mm -hmm. so you can choose to pay something out of pocket if you would like to have a lower cost, or you can have a zero dollar deductible, not have to worry about paying anything, but you are paying a little bit higher in premiums. Okay. Did you want to say anything else about paying like on the side versus in with your insurance? Yes. Yes. So really 
I would only recommend paying for an accident out of your own pocket and not contacting your insurance if the damage is going to be below the cost of your deductible. So let's say you have a $2,000 deductible, the damage is only going to be $800, you might as well pay for it out of pocket and because your insurance company is going to deny it anyways. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't recommend paying out of pocket for things like that is there is a lot of risk of someone committing fraud for someone to say, oh yeah, I have $5,000 worth of damage when really they only have $1,000 and then you're fronting the bill for whatever they say since you don't have anyone backing you up, which is also a benefit of having insurance because we're going to back you up in the event of an accident or another claim. Got it. Is that the same for, let's say, you know, your car window is broken into? I'm assuming the cost of a window is less than most deductibles. So is, is that kind of the same case? Yeah. So a lot of people do choose to have specifically for that glass coverage, which a lot of the time is covered under comprehensive. Um, they, they choose to have that deductible a lot lower than their collision deductible, which is for accidents. So that's a way where they can still have the insurance company pay for it. It's a lot less expensive for comprehensive than it is for collision. And so it doesn't impact the premium as much and they're able to kind of save money both ways. Okay. Um, can you just, again, go over comprehensive? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So much like the name, it covers a lot. So it covers basic things like theft, vandalism, natural disasters, live animal damage, and glass damage, among other things, but those are the major ones. And then collision is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It covers when you're in an accident or you collide with another object. Okay. All right. That, that makes sense. I don't know why I thought it was way more complicated than that. I think it's comprehensive is like an intimidating word, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have one more question. I think this one's a really interesting one. So I saved it for last. Is it true that men pay more for car insurance than women? I've heard it's been debunked that red cars have to pay more in car insurance than any other color, but what about the men versus women? Great question. Um, I can't speak for all companies, just the one that I've work for, but we do not charge a different weight, male versus female at all. We do take note of that just so we have it on the record, but it isn't something that impacts the rate. And you're absolutely right. The red versus any other color is totally debunked. My company doesn't even write down the color of your vehicle. It doesn't matter. So um, yeah, those two things are not something that we use in our underwriting factors any longer. Okay. Are there any other underlying factors we might not know about that might be interesting? Um, let me think. I think we've pretty much covered them. Uh, yeah. A lot of them just have to do with where you're living, the, the weather, the road conditions, um, the, the claims that are filed in that area. One interesting one is something that can increase the cost of insurance is if you move from a not as nice neighborhood to a nicer neighborhood, you may find your insurance rates go up because the vehicles that are damaged in that nicer neighborhood are typically more expensive. And so, what? yes, if our claims are more expensive in that area than in your, le your less nicer area, then that can actually cause an increase. A lot of people think it's the other way around because there, there may be less crime involved. Right. But when there are accidents or claims, you have Teslas, Mercedes, Lexus, those vehicles are getting damaged than Corollas and Hyundais and things like that. Nothing's so, wrong with those cars, by the way. No, <laughs> no. My first car was a Toyota. I loved it. She was my baby. Nothing wrong with them. <laughs> my Chevy Cobalt was my baby. Oh, R. yes. Courtney. <laughs> Okay. That is really interesting. Okay. Well, 
That is awesome. I think that's a great start for learning about car insurance. I think it was very intimidating to uh, touch this topic because it initially was very boring to me. I'm going to be very honest about it. So I'm really impressed that you have pursued a career with it. Um, your energy has made this a lot more interesting than I expected. So thank you. For those who have more questions about car insurance or just really enjoyed talking to you or hearing from you, what are ways that people can continue to connect with you? Um, I do have Instagram. It's going to be my name, uh, Natalie, uh, N-A-T-A-L-I underscore my last name, Janetsky, which is J-A-N-E-T-S-K-E. -E. Um, you can find me on there. Feel free to shoot me a message. If you do have more questions about insurance, I'm always happy to share because it is a really daunting subject and I would love everyone to be more comfortable with it. Definitely. I hope this interview lowers other people's um, fears um, as well as premiums uh, when it comes to car insurance. Um, until then, everyone, please drive safe or um, I guess just walk. Um, but we will see you next time. If there is a basic task or aspect of life that you cannot grasp, or if you want to learn more about this topic, email howdidigetthisfar at gmail.com and tag at how did I get this far pod on Instagram with your helpful hacks. Finally, please give the podcast a rating and review so the show can continue tackling more struggles. But that's as far as we will get for now. I'm Amanda Ogan. Thanks for listening.